Otherwise, Manoj, then, then, then it's exercise of paramount power. Elected assembly would want to abrogate 370, even that is not possible. Not possible. Not possible. That is why they had to, Manoj, do these things in the manner that they did. Yes, yes. That the will of the people is to abrogate it. Yes. Which is reflected by an assembly elected. Yes. You are saying even that scenario, it cannot be done. Trying to understand the consequent would be even then. We, we can't, we can't bring. No, no, I'm only saying these look, are issues and, that will and die. If one looks at it carefully. Yeah. Right? In India, the, 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 the process was the opposite. It's the only exception. The process was just the opposite. There was disparity. There were existing disparities. There were 562 princely states. There were states of, 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 which, are, which, are, which were part of the British crown. They had to be amalgamated. And each of them had certain conditions. But then ultimately they all agreed, okay, for the states that were part of 562, all agreed. But this particular state of Jammu and Kashmir was an exception. And the exception was constitutionally engrafted in Article 370. And the terms of the exception were constitutionally engrafted in 370. You can't jettison the people of the, of the of the state of Jammu and Kashmir and decide that there is then what's the difference between this and whether it's the act of the crown? What's the difference between this and the annexation of Junagadh? Or the annexation of Hyderabad? Then it's an act of paramountcy that I am the union and I will decide. When you have constitutionally well, has committed yourself that if this is to be done, you have to follow a process which two sovereign authorities have agreed upon and it grafted in Article 370. Otherwise, well, then, then, then it's exercise of paramount power. When the assimilative exercise carried out, uh, your submission, as I understand, is JNK is an exception because a temporary provision was created for a period of time, and after that, it is engrafted permanently into the constitution. Because you can't revive the constituent assembly. I'm just saying, what yes, is that's what my submission I appreciate, Manoj, your lordship has fully uh, understood what I'm trying to say. What, 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 what is it that we are, you have a state of Jammu and Kashmir with today 14 million people. At that time, mother, they were much less. They have no, they have no uh, uh, role to play in their own faith. They have no role to play. If in 1950 it was part of the union, there would be no issue. The aspirations, the desires of the people, whatever it is, Mother. After all, this was something that also had international repercussions at that point in time. If an elected assembly would want to abrogate 370, even that is not possible. Not possible. Not possible. That is why they had to, Mother, do these things in the manner that they did. But the only way we can reach to that conclusion is by saying that once the period for the uh, work of the constituent assembly of the state comes to an end then what is essentially a temporary provision assumes a permanent character in the constitution but that yes it has not to be that except but if you have, but if that hypothesis is not accepted then the only basis on which you can really you know place your petitions here is that by asserting that a pre constitution compact which was entered into between an independent state yes and a state in which it has merged, so to speak, is enforceable, irrespective of what the legislative power of the merging state is. Because Malad, the legislative power, both of the parliament here, cannot override Malad, the, 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 the powers under 356 of the constitution. Because what has been used is 356. 
There is no such power by under 356 that can mothers take. Or take can over. an independent state, which accepts the sovereignty of another state unconditionally, still say that, well, uh, if the parliament of that state to which we have assumed uh, sovereign, the, the sovereignty of uh, is still restrained in terms of the original compact? Well, it's unconditional, mother. It's unconditional. And apart from, forget about that. Can Parliament of India, mothers, Parliament of India, in the context of its responsibilities and powers under the Constitution of India, do an act beyond 356? Can't. There are very complex issues that your lordships will have to decide. This power is exercised under 356. How is that can be exercised under 356? 356 itself is a temporary power. What are you trying to say is to me? Well, what you are saying, you see, it means even, let us say, a hypothesis that the will of the people is to abrogate it, yeah. which is reflected by an assembly elected. Yeah. You are saying even that scenario, it cannot be done. Trying to understand the concept. would be, even then it can't be done. But that would be a political act then, Malik. I would, I would say that if that situation arises, it would be a political act. That's not been done, but be that as it may. Malas, can we kindly look at it from this point of view? 356 itself is a temporary provision. What's the purpose of 366? To restore democracy. Is the is the intention behind the 356 position, which is a temporary provision, to 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 decimate democracy? No, it's to say, let's keep 356 aside for the time being because. We are now interpreting no, I'm saying, we are interpreting clause three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I appreciate it. We, we can't we can't bring no no, I'm only saying these look, are issues and, that were and tried. If one looks at it carefully, yeah. clause sub clause B two says such are the matters in the said list with the concurrence of the government of the state, the president may by, by order specify. So all other matters which are not included in clause one Required can be in can be now uh, this the parliament of the country can legislate with the concurrence yes. of the government of the state. Correct. Now what is meant by the concurrence of the government of the state is specified in clause two. Yes. As long as there is no legislative assembly. Correct. In that case, it's the constituent assembly which will which will have the power. Yes. And after the state assembly has been constituted, then it will be placed before the state assembly. Correct. That's the purport of absolutely, laws two. Absolutely right. So that's also worked itself out. One. Yeah. But once the once the state assembly has been constituted right, right. in terms of the constitution of the state, then it is governed by the proviso first and the second proviso to clause one. Yes. Which says, provided that no such order which relates to matters specified, matters specified so and so, so and so in consultation with the government of the state, yes. concurrence is not required yes. because it's already right. included in the yes. order of uh, accession. The second proviso applies when it is not included in the order of succession right. and right. says, provided further that no such order which relates to matters referred to in the last provision shall be accept with the concurrence of the government. Right. So all that is required is concurrence of the government. Right. Right. But to say that the proviso to clause three right. will operate even after no, it says the constitution. This article shall cease to operate, not just any laws, that this article shall cease to operate. There's a difference, Malak. Actually, proviso one and proviso two have worked themselves out because now you have a constitution. Yes, it's not worked itself out. It will continue to apply as long as it is there is concurrence of the state government. That's right. And in between the constitution in 1957 is framed, Malas. 